I'm Rusty Wise, and we are live from Swadanoa. We're in front of the Swadanoa First Baptist Church, which is behind me. We just left Black Mountain just a few miles down the road, and we were in their meeting of official personnel at the fire department, the police department, the National Guard. We'll be showing you some B-roll of that. They were getting ready to do search and rescues up there. They were teaming up and getting a game plan. Most of Black Mountain has power, at least 71% of the power. Uh, we are, like I say, right now, we are in Swannanoa at the First Baptist Church, and there's a steady stream of cars behind me for relief. I've seen people in pajamas. I've seen people with little on their back, so to speak, uh, just walking up and getting goods here at the First Baptist Church in Swannanoa. There's also a church over here. There's uh, a church beside of us. The fire department's right across the street from us. There's been a lot of trucks coming in and out. Uh, I'll give you a little rundown of the town of Black Mountain. This is as of today. 71% of the roads were clear at Black Mountain. Electricity was sporadic. Sales service was very sporadic, and we couldn't even get out in, in Black Mountain. And so they said that we were better suited up here because this area did not have as good reception as they did. So we have our satellite and the public can use our Wi-Fi. The town of water system for Black Mountain is down, so they need drinking water. Now, one lady here, before we went live, she said the biggest need that they have here is oxygen. So they need oxygen. So if there's any way you can get oxygen up here to the First Baptist Church in Swannanoa, they need oxygen. They've got medical supplies. They've got food. I saw a food truck behind us. Now a little bit about how this area lays out. If you can see behind me or on each side of me, there's valley. We're actually in a low valley, and the Swannanoa River actually runs down. There's a mountain on the left and a mountain on the right. And in the valley, here's the Swannanoa River. Now, Black Mountain has Flat Creek that runs down into Swannanoa. The Swannanoa Creek runs through Swannanoa here from Black Mountain to Swannanoa, and then it heads to Asheville. And then when it gets to Asheville, it dumps into the Fritch Broad. So this whole area is just like a gutter. The water, it rains in the mountains, and it comes down the mountain, and it's just like in a gutter. So as you can see by some of our B-roll, but Black Mountain is having food and water distribution, and they're set up at the Ingalls. The Ingalls there. There's a first medical, first aid center at the Black Mountain Chamber of Commerce at the visitor center. And they're trying to get more satellites and connectivity. That's really the biggest thing right now is people trying to get cell service and Wi-Fi. It's very sporadic, and they really need that. We're going to show you some images of what we've seen thus far and uh, we'll go from there. Stay tuned. All righty, we have Charles Neal here, which is uh, original uh, from Cherryville, North Carolina. And Charles, you live up here in Swannanoa now. Tell us a little bit about how all this started. It hit us hard real quick. I mean, I mean, they said that when they call a storm, we don't look at it as devastation as it is. We kind of figure it's going to be, ah, oh, it's going to be another little bit of water and all this. But when it came, it came and hit hard at one time. Now, about what time was that on Friday? I guess Friday morning. Friday morning, my son called me around 530. He works for the sheriff's department, and he said, Dad, get out, get out now. Get to higher grounds. And it wasn't like 30 minutes later, we was underwater. I mean, it was just coming over the roads, cars washing down the roads, buildings. People have lost everything here. So it happened that quick? Yeah, it was quick. Have you had flooding before up here? Yeah, in 04. 
We had, you know, they called for a heavy storm and it got to just above the banks, you know, a little bit out of the banks of uh, Swan Oil River. But that's what we was figuring this time. You know, they said it was going to be bad. We didn't figure it was going to be this bad. I know we just left Black Mountain. They have sporadic power, but once we got a couple stop lights out of Black Mountain, it's just dark this way. Yes, it's been dark ever since the storm hit. There's so many power lines, so many tractors and trailers and houses. It's just tore lines down. It's just looks like a bomb went off. Yeah, I saw somebody walking in their pajamas coming to get food, and that might be the only clothes they have. Well, I live across the other side of the river, and there are family living on the school, the school uh, concrete there. They lost everything. We've been feeding them every night, uh, but they don't have they don't have clothes put on their backs. Now I know there's a lot of helicopters flying in. Are they flying in on a ball field or something over no, there? No, the Harley Davidson shop. I seen two or three helicopters landing in the big field right there beside the Harley Davidson shop. They've been coming in about every 15 minutes, dropping supplies. They're trying to get people that's on up the mountains that the road is totally gone. I mean, they're still trapped up here. They've been trapped up here three or four days, no way to get in and out. Do you know if anybody's missing in Swannanoa? Uh, several people's missing. It's just that we, no communication, no phone service, you know, no way to touch base with any of your families. So we don't know, I mean, yes, there's some body counts that they they found. Now I know one lady, she just left, she said there's a lack of oxygen, that people need oxygen. Yeah. Is there anything else that this community needs right off hand that you know of? Just gas, I mean, the generators, people trying to live off of just a generator for the refrigerator. You know, it takes gas, I mean, uh, basically gas and water. You know, you gotta have water to survive. I know Black Mountain, their water's down even though they have power cause, you know, it's contaminated and they didn't know when it would get restored. So water's gonna be an issue even after you get power. Right, several weeks, several weeks. They're talking about 10 to 15 days before they get the water and sewer pipes. There are over 6,000 of feet of water and sewer lines gone. Gone, I mean, washed away. Your family was fortunate. You said it kind of turned and you, you spared your house. Yes. My road, there are like four houses left and the rest of them's wiped out. It just made like a horseshoe around my house. I was lucky enough to got a little water damage in the basement and that's it. Well, I know just looking at the topography, you know, it's, it's in a valley and I, I guess, you know, 36 inches of rain or whatever just had to go somewhere. Right. I mean, it, downhill. Now it just went downhill and it went fast. Well, Charles, anything else you'd like to say? Uh, I know we're we're raising some goods and having a uh, you know donation drive in charitable. We're going to bring it up Sunday morning, and uh, everybody that's watching, uh, 1242 Shelby Highway in charitable, we have a donation drive going right across from Food Line. Go to Food Line, wipe them out, bring it across the street, and we'll be bringing it up here Sunday morning. We're with Jeff Dowdy, which is from the First Baptist Church of Swannanoa. I wanted to get that right. And it's amazing what you guys are doing. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about the community right now? Sure. So uh, the community of Swannanoa really got devastated by this flood. Uh, so much has uh, happened where people are needing to come up and get goods, uh, water especially because we don't need water for a while, um, food. Uh, some essentials um, to be able to be able to survive. Um, that's basically what they're doing from day to day, just surviving. Now I noticed the, the topography. You guys are kind of on a like a knoll in the middle of the valley. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the the river came about 30 yards from our church, uh, but that enabled us to stay high and dry, uh, which has been a blessing because then we could be a resource to the community, which has really been our our heartbeat for a long time. And now God's using us in amazing ways. Uh, to really serve our community in ways we never thought possible. Now, is there anything that you guys really need that you're running out of? It's been amazing the donations that have come in from all over uh, the country, really. Um, and so we're in, not in need of anything right now. Uh, it's been a, almost a surplus of things that we have uh, that we've been able to push out into the community. Uh, we know that in the days to come, um, there might be needs that come up 
Um, certainly there's going to be a rebuild process and all those sorts of things. Uh, but right now we have what we need. Uh, we have resources, we have volunteers. In fact, we have so many volunteers um, that we were having to send them some other places um, because we have so many volunteers. But that's been a blessing too, uh, to be able to push out all what we need to do in this community. But right now it's just survival mode uh, for the next couple of days. Now, how about you, you and your home? Is your home okay? My home is fine. Uh, I live about 10 minutes from here. Um, our community got pretty trashed with trees. So it took us a couple of days to get here because we had to cut our way out and then uh, had to have uh, the I-40 get cleared up a little bit so we could get this way. Um, but once we did, uh, we're fine. Um, but there's so many people in this valley that really got devastated. Now, how many members do you have? So membership is around 600 or so. Uh, we have about a couple hundred on a Sunday morning. Well, thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to say, Jeff? No, we just thank you so much. Uh, for those who are out there, uh, pray for us. Um, we, we need your help. Um, and certainly we're going to need help in the future uh, with projects and rebuild and clean out and all those sorts of things. So thank you so much. All right, we've got two volunteers here. Aiden. Hi, I'm Aiden, and we're here to with the ERN from Rockfish Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I'm Isaiah. I'm the uh, general manager here, and I'm running this whole operation here at Swannerville First Baptist Church. Now, what is your operation? What, what's the logistics of it? Uh, the logistics of it is just get as much food and water out to the people that can't get any of the water and food. And we have some search teams here to help distribute them up the mountain, down the mountain. And we are here to store the food and because we have running power now with a generator. Our biggest operation now is just getting out there. So if you need any food, water, then you need to just come over here, Swan Noah. And if you can't get over here, send someone that can, we'll get you out. We'll get all side by sides. We have 30 side by sides that's ready to go out and send some people out, give you some food. Now, I know the helicopters have been landed in behind here. Now, are y'all taking those goods and bringing it here? Or are y'all helping with that relief effort with the helicopters? So, here in about an hour or so, um, we're going to have a helicopter land in the top part of our parking lot, and they're going to distribute medical supplies. Now, one lady earlier said that w that she was needing oxygen. She was hunting oxygen. Is that an issue here? Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, I'm kind of just a bouncer, so I don't really know much about anything. Now, you said you were from Fayetteville, North Carolina, correct? Yes, sir. So our uh, church back uh, when uh, Tennessee had something like this, but on a much smaller scale, we decided to come together and put an uh, emergency response network for our church, ERN, and that's who we're here with. How long have you been here? I've been here since about yesterday, uh, yesterday afternoon. Now the church, I guess y'all have been busy ever since Friday. We've been busy since Thursday when it hit. We were first a shelter with Red Cross, and then they took them all out to the Ag Center, and Red Cross set up over there, and then we just started giving out water and food to people, and then now we've become a big organization helping out with ERN, and we just had some news come out, and we've just been helping everyone as we can. So. I know it started raining here Tuesday and Wednesday, so that increased the, the flooding tremendously. Yeah, it did increase it, and some more people had some problems, and it was just a sad situation. But we've been out, able to help out people. We have people with boats now. We have canoes. We have rafts, and we've been helping everyone out. Oh, is that our boat? So you're looking for your helicopter? Yeah, I'm landing, yeah. Yeah, I'm landing the helicopter. Okay. So. Okay. Now, where's the helicopter coming from? That is coming from, it is coming from Hickory. It is called Operation Airdrop. And they, uh, Ashley Ball, she was one of the people that came over here and told us about it. And uh, she was the one that got us hooked up. And I got some calls in. We got some medical supplies coming in. I know there's still some people missing. Um, I, I know we have one lady that's hunting her parents. And uh, it's my understanding there's been 10 bodies recovered in the area. And so uh, how many people's missing? Do, or do we even have a clue? We have 600 missing, and we have about four search teams trying to find some of those people. We have people with side-by-sides, big trucks, and just a bunch of people from the emergency services department. We have some people from the fire department helping us out. We have people with drones searching whatever, and we're doing everything we can to find those people. We have uh, people from Missouri Task Force One 
and uh, Nebraska Task Force One out here. Uh, we got National Guard, we got the Coast Guard, and uh, I'm pretty sure we have some of the Reserve out here too, helping out. Well, we appreciate your service. Uh, looks like it's a coordinated effort. Y'all are doing a great job. Uh, just keep up the good work, and we'll have er everyone in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nice meeting you. Um, anyway, like I was saying, a daughter is missing her parents. Now, they lived in a, a trailer at 15 Avery Woods Drive here in Swannanoa, and the daughter is Shania Jordan, and her parents are Nola and Robert Ramsour, and they are really wanting to find, she's really wanting to find her parents. So anybody out there that knows Nola or Robert Ramsour or have seen them, they could have left the area, but she has not seen them, and she's desperately trying to find her parents. Like earlier, there's over 10 bodies already recovered. Her parents are missing, and they're Nola and Robert Ramsour. So we'll stay live, and we'll uh, be interviewing possibly more people. We did talk to the fire chief. He was busy. He didn't have time to interview. He said he's been interviewing ever since the, the crisis started. So stay tuned, guys. I'm Rusty Wise with Wise News Network, and we are in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. As the sun's going down, we just pulled into town, and it's surely a mess. As you can see by the B-roll that we're getting ready to show you, the, the second lower road and all the businesses were destroyed. Now, the lower street is called Locust Street, and we're actually on Oak Avenue, which is the upper street in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. Spruce Pine, North Carolina, has been heavily damaged. The North Toe River crested above uh, its flood stage, and uh, I think it was about 20 feet, 15 to 20 feet by what we saw. There was a destroyed park across the river. And like I say, we are on Upper Street, which is actually Oak Avenue in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. They did get the power on a few hours ago, and there is spotty cell service. Now, we had to come all the way. We were trying to come from I-40 up through Marion, but we talked to some highway patrol, and they routed us up through Morganton and around. We came on Highway 194 and 19E to get here, so it was very tricky to get here. Had to go around trees and power lines, and it was a little crazy. Um, also, across the street here, is uh, Miss Nora Fraser. Now, Miss Fraser, she had some damage, as you can see. We're going to pan the camera around. And it, it says uh, the estate by Oak Avenue. They are, are planning on turning that into an art gallery and a restaurant. Now, she had been saying that that wall, she's been complaining to the owner about that wall falling for the past 20 years, and nothing was ever done. But as you can see, the wall next door fell, and it actually fell on her house. But luckily, she stayed dry. She's on the upper level, which is probably 25 feet above or 30 feet above the lower level. So she fared well. But she wanted to come out and talk a very nice lady uh, she's lived here 20 years she said and she wanted to tell everybody uh, thank you for the prayers that everybody's given and the food and everything else she said this was really a mess a day or two ago but they have cleaned up upper street as you can see it's pretty clean but the, the art gallery that they're wanting to put across the street is k paulette that's an artist and the the owner said that he had many paintings and luckily they did not get wet so the estate at oak avenue they're looking about putting a restaurant there and the lady was nora fraser that spoke to us she didn't want to go on camera but she's a very nice lady but as you can see uh, spruce pine was devastated on the lower level the angles has been decimated the north toe river got out of its banks and across the river is just decimated and it's going to take a while to clean up the lower level. So I'm Rusty Wise with the Wise News Network reporting live from Spruce Pine, North Carolina, in North Carolina. Hurricane Helene damage. Stay tuned for more. Appreciate everyone watching. Again, have a good night.